American University in Bulgaria. This program is brought to you by AUBG Talks. For more, visit us at youtube.com slash AUBG Talks. Okay, let's do this because it's easier. How's life? Good. Not bad, huh? Okay, uh, first thing first, it's not going to be a lecture tonight, so I don't know why on earth anyone would expect a lecture, but you, I think you've had plenty. So this is no lecture. Thanks for the introduction. This is a uh, short introduction of myself, what I've done, uh, and then I'll be fair game, be open to questions. Uh, and judging by the number of you, you probably have a gazillion questions. So we'll have limited time. Um, but um, seriously, it's, um, if you don't mind me doing this, because I'm tired. I drove for two hours almost. Um, it's, um, this is a special place for me, really. Um, it sounds very corny, but I graduated, um, the first graduating class of 95. Uh, romantic years. Um, it's been quite a while, four or five years since then. And um, I, um, needless to say, this, this, this institution holds a special place in my heart. I uh, don't come often, uh, or um, uh, not as often as I would like to. Lastly, I've been here for the uh, anniversary 20 years, which was, it was last year. Um, I've done a lecture th four years ago. None of you were here, probably. <laughs> um, and now I'm here again. Um, so again, thanks for the invitation. Um, I would try to come often, if invited and uninvited, uh, do some of the parties, probably. Uh, but for the time being, let's stick to, uh, 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 to why I'm here. Quick uh, real life story, very quick. Um, I told you already, I graduated in 95. Um, I did business administration because it was very trendy then. I don't know how, how it's now. Um, curious probably to know is that I've, uh, uh, it, it wasn't always that I wanted to be a financier, an uh, investment banker, or do, uh, uh, do economics. I used to be, uh, uh, well, I used to play soccer. I still play soccer. But uh, I used to take special interest in uh, comparative linguistics. Go figure. But I had a good friend, uh, still a good friend of mine. Um, so I started the university here uh, first year. First year when the university opened, it was 91. And um, I came straight from uh, Sofia University, where I was doing, I was first year then student uh, English philology. And I thought, I will, well, um, American University opened. I thought, great, uh, the best place to, to do English literature. Stupid. So I, uh, I came here. And I was doing literature. I, literally, I was doing Shakespeare until my uh, junior year, almost until my junior year. A uh, very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, um, he did this exchange semester in Washington, uh, third or fourth semester. So he comes straight back from Washington. It was a big deal. Huh? He went to Washington, came back. This was 90, I forget it, long time ago. Uh, so the guy comes from Washington, so straight from Washington, and says, you know, listen, he was doing journalism and mass communication. He said, listen, everyone's talking about business administration, man. <laughs> well, OK. And we had some, uh, I would say at that time, probably a uh, good 30, 40% of the people were doing business administration. Uh, well, it wasn't like they were doing the business law, the accounting, all that boring crap. Uh, and I was doing Shakespeare, because it's cool. Eh? So the guy says, Ivan, Ivan says, you know, listen, man, business administration is the thing. I said, OK. So we, we, uh, we thought real hard. And next semester, I was doing business administration already. He was doing journalism and mass communications. <laughs> I don't know why. So that's how I, I, I started, uh, started with this whole finance stuff. So I, I got hooked on the, um, uh, on the uh, finance uh, and what have you. By the end of the third year, I was thinking Wall Street and careers and investment banking. Uh, I don't remember. I watched the movie, I guess. Um, <laughs> So there I am. I graduated in '95. I started uh, with a um, um, 
with a small consulting company, US-based consulting company. Um, uh, those were the years where the United States Agency for International Development, some of you might have heard the name, was doing all kind of grants uh, and uh, needed project management on various, you know, in various niches and, and areas. So at that time, my game plan was, you know, do three years in Bulgaria and then do MBA because that's what people used to do. Uh, so I started for that consulting company. I was a uh, finance manager and uh, uh, it was a very small company. Uh, it was great experience because with small companies, U.S. run, it's, uh, it's basically a steep learning curve. So I was doing f uh, basic financial management and project management for almost three years, uh, during which time I applied at several schools. Uh, and then in 98, I uh, went to Thunderbird. Uh, Thunderbird is a, anyone know where Thunderbird is? University? Google it, okay. So I went to Thunderbird, did my MBA in Arizona, um, did finance. Thunderbird is uh, at that time, well, probably even now, is number one international business school. Um, it's. Um, it's, it's very smart because international business is so big, no one actually profiles in international business, so it's not so hard to be number one, I'm guessing. Uh, but still, very reputable school. Um, I'm, I'm glad and I had great experience. If you've heard about, you've heard of Enron, I'm sure some of you, and uh, we, used to, uh, we used to supply uh, financiers to Enron. We were one of the hubs for Enron. Uh, my financial engineering uh, professor was, uh, the financial engineering guru at Enron. Uh, OK, so those were good times, good times. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so there, there I was for two years, uh, almost two years. And I started, uh, obviously, chasing the investment banks. Um, and in the uh, beginning of April, I was in Enron doing my last round of interviews and very happy to, to, to be almost on the verge of starting next week. Uh, uh, because I just gave up on the whole investment banking uh, stuff. Uh, and just uh, a week before accepting Enron's offer, I got an offer from JP Morgan. And I went to New York, and I did investment banking for a while. So this was, uh, this was great. It was one of my dreams, short-lived, but, uh, but uh, real something. Um, I stayed in the States for five years, of which two years I was at Thunderbird, uh, did some mergers and acquisitions with the New York office of J.P. Morgan. Um, at the end of 2003, um, a bunch of, uh, well, a number of us uh, decided to start a hedge fund uh, because it was cool. Again, you, know, you remember Shakespeare, business administration, investment banking, then hedge funds was cool. So we started a hedge fund. Uh, the hedge fund is a, is a, is a thing um, where you take the money of other people and invest in, in, um, in something that uh, was created by other people. So it's, it's pretty OK. Uh, short story is it didn't work quite well. But uh, you know, be that as it may, I was back in Bulgaria. And for the past um, six, seven years or more, I've done uh, corporate finance. Uh, this is my area of expertise. Uh, it was, it's, it's no different from what I've done uh, in uh, what, what I did in JP Morgan. Uh, basically, it's financial analysis of corporations and uh, mergers and acquisitions and uh, um, that kind of stuff, which in Bulgaria is abundant, if, as you can imagine. Um, I have been with Deloitte for uh, almost four years. In Deloitte, I, uh, I lead the financial advisory uh, practice. Deloitte is a global organization. Um, it's one of the big four companies. Uh, again, apologies for, uh, to those of you who know very well Deloitte and uh, the rest of the big four. Uh, but again, we deal with audit. If you go to the website, I guess we'll say audit, consulting, financial advisory, tax, and enterprise risk management. I do financial advisory. Uh, 170,000 people. I even gave the interview uh, 20 minutes ago. Um, 28 billion uh, US dollars revenue. I knew that. I didn't check it before I came. Uh, it's really. Um, so, so that's us. Uh, four years in Deloitte. We're a small group of uh, people in financial advisory. Generally, 
in the, uh, the big four companies, and it's us with no intention to advertise our competitors, PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, and um, uh, whew, maybe we are three, uh, and Ernst Young. Um, uh, the bread and butter of this business is the audit. Uh, so the natural progression of things is if you're, if you're, if you're okay, you do audit, uh, and then you do enterprise risk services if you are a little better, and then you know if you're super great, you do what I do. <laughs> okay, more or less. Um, 170, 80 people probably as to date. Um, we're all around 200 people, all the big four in Bulgaria. Maybe KPMG a little, uh, a little bigger practice, uh, but that's what we do: audit, financial advisory, tax, and. Um, Risk, enterprise risk services. Um, we um, have, a, I don't know how many, but enough a AUBGers. Um, of course, none of them I knew back from my days. Uh, but we are open and looking for talent, which probably will be a, a, a subject matter of a later discussion when the job fair is uh, announced and uh, will be properly presented. But to wrap it up, again, and to start with, to end with uh, what I started, I'm here just to tell you, and I've already told you about myself. Um, I'm open to questions. Uh, I can promise that uh, we can be here presenting Deloitte in a very structured manner when time comes. Uh, and um, in the meantime, now and after the uh, uh, small session ends, you have some uh, brochures, some materials, uh, PR, propaganda, and my business cards. Um, and I'm literally, uh, literally available. Drop me a line, uh, call me, not on my mobile, but uh, try. <laughs> Thank you for your time, for now. Questions? Yes. So Deloitte is rated as one of the 100 best places in the world. So can you tell what exactly makes it one of, like, one of them? Well, personally, they didn't ask me when they did the ranking, uh, so I, I don't know what they, they, uh, they've taken into account. You would uh, seriously imagine a, a, a company big as Deloitte uh, to have not only best practices when it comes to expertise, you know, finance stuff or audit stuff, but to, uh, to care about people. Um, you can have 170,000 people uh, without sense of identity. Uh, um, so I think if, uh, if I have to choose one thing, it's really care about people. It, it, it's, it, it sounds corny, but I can tell you on local grounds, and, you know, and I've seen it obviously with, with JP Morgan, but I'm sure it's, it's the same Deloitte uh, in the States and uh, across the globe. Uh, you need, uh, everyone is a talent by, by themselves, uh, but you need a sense to feel a sense of belonging when you walk into a, a, a corporation and an organization. What you have to do uh, if you're part of a local management is to, to, to make the people that come and work for you just part of a small, you know, small, big, it doesn't matter, but a, a tight group of people, like your breed of people. How you do that, it's, it's uh, I guess there's no recipe, but uh, you know, you all have friends. Uh, you all have, as they say, comrades. So we are trying to, to be a, a group of comrades, so to speak. And uh, I think this is number one. Everything else is secondary. Of course, you get paid for what you do. Um, you know, some of the brainwash uh, would be, you know, we are the smartest on the street, which is partly true, but, you know, the other part is different. Uh, but, yeah, I think making, making people... Uh, belong to a, to, a, to a bigger cause, you know, a, a greater group of people. That's, that's probably number one. Yeah? Would you describe a typical day at work? Oh, you wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have asked me this question if you were applying for a job with us. Um, the last two weeks, I, I will describe, the, I won't describe, I just did the last two weeks were horrible. I was telling, actually, my son studies here, and he um, he is now taking a, an exam of some sort. Or at least that's what he told me. Uh, <laughs> so don't tell me if there are no exams. Uh, 
But I was telling him, because he always asked me, were you busy this Saturday and Sunday? Were you, uh, did you work this, this weekend? Uh, I don't work every weekend, uh, but the last two, two weeks were nightmarish. Uh, so the typical day of the last two weeks were uh, probably looked like going back home around 3, 3.30 in the morning and back to work around 9. So that's a typical. What happens in between, you don't care because most of it you don't see it. Uh, and you, you try not to, 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 to make a, what we say a material mistake, which uh, last time was 30 million euros. It was pretty material. <laughs> uh, you know, by Bulgarian, by any standards. Um, but if in the ordinary course of business, uh, what we do, again, and I can talk financial advisory, audit is a, different, uh, is a different animal. Audit, you have a number of clients. Of course, you chase new clients. But audit people, they go and they inspect the books so that when you have accounting statements, and again, I don't know how many of you are you know, hardcore financiers and they probably have yeah, Balkan studies something else, maybe. Uh, but audit people, they go get to the company books so that at the end of the year, when a company presents the report, say Deloitte, you know, auditors been there and they verified and it's all cool. So you have clients, you go to clients and you pretty much have your day, have your year broken down into minutes. Uh, financial advisor is different. Financial advisor, you try to chase a deal. You try to to see who's buying who, or if no one's buying no one, you try to brainwash someone to buy someone, because what are you going to do? Okay, so it really depends on, it really depends on and, and what day of the week it is and what week it is. But we go, if we are not working on a deal, uh, over the last month we've, we, we've been working on three deals, and they're big deals. What we do is, Financial analysis, which is basic due diligence, you go and decompose the accounts, and you, if you're working for someone who wants to buy a company, okay, that someone, that corporation needs an advisor, so we are the advisors, and we say, you know, that corporation doesn't cost anything, you know, you should be crazy to buy it, but at the end of the day, what you do is you do financial analysis of the statements. So the last month we had, we we've been working on three deals. Two of them have already passed, uh, no success. Uh, but we're still progressing and we're working on one. Uh, so the typical day in, 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 in this situation will be to just go and pick up the work from where you, you left it the previous day. Uh, but if not, you try, to, uh, you try to pitch, you go to clients, you present opportunities. Opportunities look like, uh, they look like, like this. You, know? you have this distributor. Uh, you should be stupid not to get that distributor out of the business because he's doing that you know, kind of margin. And you can get that margin. And plus, you have that warehouse. And that warehouse and this distributor, you know, if you combine it, you don't need the 20 trucks here. And that's, that's what you do. But you, you, you try to steer the right conversations to the right people when you don't have many deals to work on present. Oh, so this was a long answer. <laughs> Yes, yes, sorry, yes. They fired me. Uh, partly true, partly true. They don't fire people, they lay off people. Uh, in investment banking, uh, investment banking is, uh, uh, is for limited, well, obviously some people do it for life, but for, for limited time. Uh, it's basically boom and bust. The short answer to your question is because there was no money left. Uh, there was money 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, there, there, there were no money. Then there was money again 2005, 6, 7. Now there's not that much money. Uh, so it's just a, a normal uh, boom and bust. That's, uh, that's what happened. Um, normal. Yes. Well, if, if you make sure that only one shows at the door, obviously, the chances of that someone are pretty high. But uh, I mean, this is a, 
I think it's quicker and easier to do it this way. Um, we, again, I, and I will speak for financial advisors, although sometimes you know they call me for, for other interviews, but we're looking for good people, which means basically um, right attitude. Uh, there is no technical. Uh, there is no technical interview of, of any of any sort. For financial advisor, they might be because again, it's a. Um, in, uh, we 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 take people in audit, and then some of them go to financial advisor, or maybe none of them. It really depends. But but in audit, which is the entry point of of uh, where you always most most often start with, with Big Four, uh, just behavioral questions, just uh, be yourself. Uh, I know it sounds corny, but uh, you know they told me the same when I was doing interviews with Lehman and JP Morgan, and it, it is, it's a fact. Even if I uh, applied for, for higher positions than uh, what you would be applying uh, with Deloitte or uh, KPMGs in uh, the world. Just be curious, uh, don't be nervous. Was it the second question? Uh, what, what are you looking for? Like, what experiences? Same. Same. Uh, I would uh, we'll have to check with, with, with HR again, but uh, she would be crazy to look for, for, for uh, expertise, for hardcore expertise when hiring people. Uh, there will be some basic, uh, it's not accounting stuff, but uh, you know, what are financial statements kind of stuff. It probably is a short, it used to be a short quiz, uh, but uh, it should be very easy. The rest is just behavioral, and uh, you have to get yourself liked, which is, again, no one has monopoly on, on that part of the, yes? Uh, you mentioned consulting. Does mm -hmm. Deloitte do consulting, and does it do it in Bulgaria? Okay, very good question, and I, I will try to answer politically correctly, which already reveals uh, what we do or what we don't do. We had a big consulting group, uh, but we scaled down. Um, now the consulting, the, the, the pure consulting is not done in Bulgaria. It's done via, uh, and I should go back a bit. I'm also part of Deloitte Central Europe. When, when I talk financial advisory, when I talk Deloitte, as a legal entity, it's, it's Deloitte Bulgaria. Okay, so we have our accounts, we pay taxes here. But we are part of Deloitte Central Europe, and it covers a lot of countries, you know, from the Czech Republic to, you know, to us, basically. By the same token, uh, we've done consulting mandates uh, where we bring a group of people uh, which are from different planets. Uh, but uh, I, I have to be honest. To be honest, consulting is not done by juniors. Consulting is done by fairly senior people, and it's pretty much a cross-border thing. In consulting, you would probably, you know, sometimes call someone to to do change management. Uh, you know, you go talk to Unicrate, one of the banks, or to you know HP. Uh, you do that with the senior management. Everyone talks English. You know, everyone's looking for best practices. Uh, so again, by the same token. Uh, you go and, and compile a group of people on a regional basis, and that's how you offer consulting. So that's what we do. Um, there is a little sort of fuzzy, it's a fuzzy space between financial consulting and, and, and advisory. There's some consulting elements in, 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 uh, in uh, purely financial consulting elements that we, we call financial advisory, and people come to us, uh, which is part of my group. But pure consulting, which is strategy, uh, business processes optimization, is done cross-border. Yes? Do you take any responsibility for bad advising? We have uh, liability caps, which is, uh, uh, which is a big issue for us. For example, latest deals that, uh, on the bigger deals, well, it goes with the fees. If I'm paid over a million, my liability cap is over a million. Uh, uh, I've done liability caps of, of 10 million plus. We we uh, one of a, uh, we were one of the companies, uh, a consortium group of uh, of companies um, that uh, were involved with the restructuring of the Bulgarian telecommunications company. And 
I can tell you fees, and it's an integrated team. It's London, us, uh, people from Prague. Uh, so we, we, we make real good money, but we have a liability cap, which is in tens of millions if we screw up. Uh, now, of course, we have legal advisors. We have you know, legal, well, very good legal protection. You can't really sue us for anything. Uh, and we can't really, you, we can really be just wrong because mostly the, thing, the things that we advise are not black and white. Uh, but of course, there's gross negligence. And so yes, sometimes in, in the range of millions, sometimes in the range of one-time fees. You know, you pay me 100,000, you know, my liability cap is 100,000. Yeah, sorry. How often do people get through, like, into other international offices? How, how do they? How often, like, do they get uh, in other locations? Mm -hmm. like, to to yeah, we call secondment. But pretty often uh, in Bulgaria, from Bulgaria, not you know, not that many, but there are opportunities. I think uh, uh, I think there are enough opportunities. Uh, from Bulgaria, there have been a couple of instances over the last three years. But I see in, in Central Europe a lot of people that move. Uh, people go to Middle East. Uh, from the UK, go to Central Europe. Uh, back again to to the UK. Yes, sorry. I have a question. So, so I know that there's like obviously more than 150 countries. So when they in the location, are they preparing to hire a person who is from that country and has extensive knowledge of the market? Let's say Bulgaria, they would rather hire a guy who who is Bulgarian related from Bulgarian University has experience working in Bulgarian banks and financial institutions, or they would rather hire a person who has like more international experience. And for example, he is like coming from some country and then he. This is this is actually a very very good question because um, and I'll, I'll I'll give you the I'll start with the example Deloitte Central Europe uh, has uh, the senior the, the the most senior rank in our organization is partner okay then you get director then you get you know below so out of the in central europe we have let's say less than 20 partners the whole of central europe i would say that of those partners uh for well at least at least 60 percent uh, english speaking from south africa from the uk from the states okay so on a very senior level it, it really doesn't matter uh if you have uh uh, you, if you have the local experience. So you would have people from the state, well, from, from the UK partners who would steer the selling effort in the Czech Republic, for example. Uh, but again, those, those guys would play with, with senior bankers. And senior bankers, you know, uh, in big organizations, they have obviously, you know, not only they speak the right language, uh, <laughs> no offense, including to local Bulgarians, but they also, you know, make decisions which are cross borders. So, for, for partners, for directors, it doesn't really uh, make much difference. But your question was very good because we are, we are always strategizing how to, 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 to raise local talent, the talent in the smaller geographies. Uh, smaller geographies, Bulgaria, obviously. Because we are here as a, we have guerrilla war that we are waging here. It's different from what you have in the UK or in Germany or in France. Our business is different. I know our habits are different. Not not so much culturally, but uh, scope, negotiations-wise, and, and so on and so forth. So for Bulgaria, I would say for Romania, for for the regional countries, you would have uh, you would be happy to have someone someone local at a senior, fairly senior level to just steer the right conversations and talk to the right people. Uh, uh, but if again, if if you are from, let's say, from, from Albania or from Romania, they want to start in Deloitte, Bulgaria as a, uh, as a financial advisor, uh, let's say associate or manager, and if, and if you've had previous experience, you'll be fine. Entry level position, probably not. Probably local, local guy would be more, more fitted. Okay, let's go. Come on, seriously? Yeah. For your channel, question. So you're speaking how that the feeling of being part of the team, the feeling of being related to your colleagues, 
and uh, usually there's some major duty responsible for the customer's operations. So that's a common delay issue. But are there some more formal techniques that the managers use to motivate the more junior employees? Like their bonuses based on performance, or like what is the schemes there that motivate people to perform better? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll start with the bonuses. And I, I will relate because, again, I, um, since I'm not really representing, representing Deloitte only, I just share my experience. Uh, the, the best place uh, or the best environment where you will have uh, super transparencies, uh, transparency around bonuses and, and, and incentive pay is Wall Street. Okay? They, don't, they don't tell you how much you'll be making, but you pretty much know by, by going back in history. You know, you know you know that if you perform, you will be getting bonuses. You know, if you're this year, you're getting you know that that much of the annual pay. If you're this year, that much of annual pay. If there's no money, no one gets paid. Okay, so this is a, a pretty much super elastic, uh, you know, performance bonus uh, environment. Then that's Wall Street. With Deloitte, locally, even globally, it, it is not that transparent. But for sure, you have benchmarks, you have targets. And you are, uh, uh, and you know that if you perform well, uh, by performing well, firstly, you know that if you, uh, as a group, have reached the target or exceeded the target, uh, you will be making money as a group. And then, obviously, we have a, a very sophisticated, <laughs> like any big organization uh, evaluation system, where people are ranked in, let's say, three, four buckets. Uh, ignore the buckets, but they're ranked on different criteria. And obviously, within that pool of uh, pool of money, uh, everyone is entitled to different uh, sort of share. But this in Deloitte, and I would say in any, in most of the organizations, you know, in Bulgaria, uh, it is, uh, it is implied. It's, it's less evident. Uh, uh, you just know, you know your targets, not not on on individual level, on on firm level. Uh, you can follow the, uh, uh, you know, pretty much the performance. So you expect. That's on bonuses. Uh, parties, events, you spend money on, 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 on partying. And that's how you bring people together. So and is there a kind of spirit of internal competition, like you and your fellow financial advisors, trying to see if we can see like, get a better deal and make more money for the company? So how, like, Locally, locally, it's very hard to happen. Uh, regionally, because again, we are part, we're Deloitte Central Europe, but we have, you know, we sometimes have cross-border deals. Yeah, we compete, but it's it's pretty fair. We don't, we are not. Uh, when you think of it, we're not real salesmen. Uh, that, that we don't go to to door selling vacuum cleaners, for example. So it's it's very hard to. Uh, you always have disgruntled people. Sometimes, you know, you can have some managers that are not happy because. They think they perform better than other managers who were awarded better, but uh, just the ordinary course of business. Yes? Um, so you're doing the net financial uh, consulting. Um, do you have a lot of capricious customers, capricious clients, and how do you deal with them? And does it mean that in this job you have to be also a good psychologist? Uh, well, yeah, you have to. They have, uh, you know, people say that, that numbers don't close deals, people close deals. And um, obviously, if you, uh, uh, get under the skin of someone, it's easier. But then, because here we're talking about a great deal of money. Uh, it can be you know, not in hundreds, millions, but for someone that's his life. If someone is selling the business or, or if someone wants to buy business and, and get money from the bank, it's a, it's a big decision. It's, uh, I guess some psychology always you know, plays, uh, is a factor. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, we try to steer the conversation through the, uh, through the, the, the basic, you know, let's say, four grade algebra. Uh, because if, you, if you're talking about investing money in something, it's, it, it's not much different from investing the money in the bank or putting it in, 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 a, to, in a deposit. Uh, we'll, we'll try to just decompose the accounts and to, to make sense so that we, we prove that this really you know, is, is a good investment if you put hundreds dollars here and uh, you have pretty good chances of you know making you know 50 
by the end of the second year. So that's, that's what we try to do. Uh, but it's very hard, and um, it's very hard because we, we in Bulgaria, and our businesses are different. We have less of a history of corporate governance, and uh, uh, yeah, even, even we, we don't have that many successful managers. We, we had a, a good three, four years, uh, you know, this, uh, this decade, and everyone who's, who started something literally made money. And now it's very hard, and people go bust because they, they, uh, they, never, they never tried to manage. They didn't need to manage. It's like buying a, a, a stock. You know, if you buy on the uptick uh, and the market is going up, everyone makes money. You don't need to care to analyze, uh, but uh, it's the herding behavior. But now it's different, and companies are really going bankrupt. Uh, so what do you do? Even if you're a psychologist, you know you see guys who are leveraged. They have so many bank debt, and they have assets that are not worth anything. So even if you're the best people in the world, you know best guy in the world, it's, it's dead end. From your experience, is it better to do an MBA after graduating or after working a couple of years? Oh, better for it's it's better for the MBA. It's better for the person. Uh, you know, my time when I was doing it, it was it wasn't so. Uh, it was sort of unwritten. You know, two three years at least. I think then because this was the the nineties. Uh, uh, then it was almost mandatory. I think that they were even starting talking five years and more. But I I know that I had very few people at Thunderbird that didn't have any who didn't have any any experience. They couldn't participate uh, well and. Uh, it's it's better to have some experience because you can really it doesn't matter if you worked as an accountant or if you worked in a in a PR agency, you have stories to tell, just like me. Yes. A bit of a personal question: How come you decided to move back to Bulgaria? Okay. No, it's okay. I uh, I will just expand on what I uh, earlier said. Wall Street. I wanted to have the the experience and. Of course, to make money, I thought I would retire by then, then the age of 40, and uh, I'm past 40, and I'm not retired yet. Uh, so that can tell you something. But at the end of my short Wall Street career, this thing called hedge fund was becoming very, very popular. And uh, three of us decided to create this hedge fund, so we created a hedge fund, and started to attract money from wealthy investors to invest in US stock and, 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 and options. And we thought that the best thing to do is to go back to Bulgaria. OK, so we, we found that hedge fund was on the, one of the Caribbean islands, great island for setting a hedge fund. Uh, so the idea was very simple. We had friends, including a colleagues from, oh God, friends from, from AUBG that were working on, on, on positions, good you know, middle managers, even some of them higher managers. They've made some money, not a great deal of money, but they were making money. So we, we thought we were smart. At that time, this was 2004. Uh, there weren't, uh, I don't know how much you're familiar with different investment schemes, but even people that were making money as, as, uh, as prof paid professionals like me just didn't have where to put the money. Even if you had 10,000, you know, you, you just put it in the bank, but it's in a current account. Not to mention people who were, who were starting to build you know, some businesses, uh, even real estate guys at that time. Uh, we have met with, with, with real estate guys that were begging people not to give them money right away and to prepay, but to pay in installments, but so that they, 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 they make 3 4% Annually, on on what the, uh, you know that you know purchase price of the apartment or whatever uh, was. So we thought there was there was there was business case to come to Bulgaria and get 10, 20 million from from people because we were and we thought we were well connected, and then do that start the hedge fund business it's like a small hedge fund. So this was the reason to to, to come back to Bulgaria. Uh, it didn't work. Quite well, because again, with the hedge fund, it's not just you 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 put your money to work. You have to make it an enterprise. You know, you can you can have three four people do that investment, but to manage uh, money of other people. Uh, so coming back to Bulgaria was was uh, 
eighty percent driven by by this opportunity that we thought we will be not only making money but do something which is interesting, because it's it's fun to invest. Uh, and then the the, the remainder twenty percent was Wall Street was uh, was no bonuses only only uh, flat pay and flat pay on Wall Street it's not good. What are the dynamics in Deloitte? How much how, how long does it take for an entry level to go on higher ladder? Uh, again, different. Uh, audit have audit have various. Much more. It's we, in audit. It's much more laddered. Uh, you start. I don't even know the the ladders. Like actually, four, five, six, seven before you become manager. But you get promoted every year, so you have semi senior, senior. Uh, I can't really. Uh, you would be making a manager, you know, within five years. Maybe even quicker. You have to pass exams. You have to get ACCA exams. Uh, I don't have ACC exam, but it should be very difficult from what I hear. <laughs> uh, haven't taken it. Uh, in financial advisory, it's it's uh, you know across the globe, it's it's the same also, but it's 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 not that. You you start as a as an associate, then you go associate two, associate three. Um, you get then you're senior. And basically, you get that promotion every year. Then you're senior. Then you're uh, senior associate. I mean. You probably spend two, three years as a senior associate, and then you become manager, and then you become assistant director or senior manager, and then you become director, and then, well, you don't really become director and partner necessarily, but uh, but that's that's where it ends with director and partner. But can you? Is that, that does it? Uh, did it answer the question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you start with the financial advising, like? You can, but it has to be a a hell of a year. It's like a good year. Uh, we have to be expanding, uh, and not because we're not good training ground for for uh, junior people. Uh, um, I, I would I would say, yeah, it has to be a a good year. And for us to be expanding, but from my practice, you know, almost four years with Deloitte, and I know everyone in financial advisory in Bulgaria. I know how they hire people. I know my names. You know, I know what they eat, when they sleep. <laughs> uh, they they usually yeah they usually you can uh, not necessarily you have to go to audit, but to go through audit. Uh, but you can you can hire someone from outside. Uh, but that someone would be, say, working in corporate finance with a small boutique, let's say Raiffeisen Investment, or it would be Unicredit, corporate banking. Someone with, with experience, even a couple of years of experience. But straight from AUBG and straight in financial advisory has to be very, very excellent year, super year. From your financial advising experience, the last couple of years in Bulgaria, what can you say about uh, the economy in Bulgaria, how it's moving, how are companies doing? Companies are doing badly. Uh, uh, Is there a positive outlook? Or? For some. For some there is positive outlook. I I I can't uh, I won't pretend to be smarter than anything that that, that you can read in the papers. Uh, we have a uh, one fundamental problem, and it's you know, it's it's consumption. You know, if you think about it, unless you figure out something which is cross border, and I'm not talking to export, you know, low value added stuff. I'm talking, you know, if you don't have your Google, your Apple, uh, um, what what are you doing? You are selling uh, sausages. To how many people? And 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 aging, okay. And it's a it's a dirty business. Or you're selling uh, detergents, which is fine because everyone needs detergents. But again, it's it's you have limits. And then you have one company doing that, or four companies. What about the rest? So by by natural uh, having this limit on on consumption, even if you, if, if if unemployment wasn't that high. Uh, even in, 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 a, in a good flat year, okay? Because if you think you go back, you know, you, you think only real estate. Uh, we can do tourism, 
Okay. If we if we get some if we get some investment from from uh, from abroad, that that would be good. But uh, most of the money went to real estate, and real estate is always inflated. It's boom and bust. So it's an, it was a small country, natural thing. Well, can you continue on this topic? Like, I, I think out of the big four companies, Dilla is the only one that has an office in uh, Bulgaria. And actually, there's kind of like many big international companies, they decide to admit Bulgaria and have offices, like in Romania or in Greece, and they just kind of reach a functional regional office kind of in Bulgaria as well. Like, being, like also particular companies like Tinji and some other ones. So, basically, what do you think about that practice? Do you think? Like Deloitte, like my decision place not to sell the area and have a global work in the local market? Or that's not the best like human resource, resource investment and money investment? Uh, just to make sure that, that I follow correctly, I, 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 we, um, at least in our business, because again, our business is, uh, you know, more than 50% is audit. Uh, you have to have b big four present in Bulgaria, they are present in Romania, they are present in, in almost any country, I would say. That, uh, because you will, you will need someone to go and, and uh, it's a cynical way to put it, but to put stamp on your financial statements. Um, so we don't have that, that kind of, uh, if you're referring to, let's say, you know, HP, for example, I think Sasha, Sasha will be here delivering a lecture, right? Um, we uh, we don't necessarily look for hubs, and uh, you know we, we wouldn't be saying you know well, let's place ourselves in Romania because it's a bigger country, there's more business there, and we'll serve you know the the related or the regional you know four or five countries out of Romania. It doesn't necessarily make that sense that much sense for us again because of the audit, uh, and we don't do that. Every of the big four. Uh, firms have a presence in Bulgaria. We are all actually uh, 20 years. We, we are commemorating 20 years. Um, well, in Bulgaria, everything is 20 years. You know, American University is 20 years. So I think everyone opened offices in Bulgaria in 21, 22, more or less. Yeah, I for the warehouse guys. You know, they have offices in Romania. And I mean, they kind of work with people in Bulgaria, but they get bills there, and they still work out for Romania. Yeah. No, no, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, so I don't know if that. Well, here in a small market, but it's going to be like equal to Romania or Greece or other big EU countries. Yeah, no, not equal. Obviously, you know, they they have in Rome, Bucharest, uh, they have bigger, much bigger teams in every, you know, particular niche of uh, of service. Much bigger teams. Uh, but but again, think about audit and think about financial statements. You know, you have legal entities here. Uh, it's. Uh, it's normal to have on the ground a team of uh, you know, hundred, at least hundred odd audit people. It, sorry. What was your experience if you had someone leading state enterprises through privatization process and transition? You mean, what is my experience locally with state enterprises? That in being Bulgaria, since Bulgaria went through market transition, what was the, the, the last experience? Leading state enterprises to that transition and advising them in the mm -hmm. process. Okay, firstly, privatization is, is, is almost, not almost, it's over uh, with very, very few bits and pieces left, small, small chunks. And um, uh, Deloitte, as, as the other actually of uh, the other the big four companies, then big six, big five, uh, we, we all had a fair chunk in doing. Uh, uh, the privatization of, let's say, the, the uh, distribution companies, the electricity distribution companies, uh, uh, some of the banks. Uh, this it was done way back when I was still uh, when I was still here. Even well, not that. Uh, beginning of 2000, uh, end of uh, the 90s. Um, so again, electricity distribution companies, uh, banks. Uh, privatization of banks, some of the banks. Now uh, we uh, recently we worked on Bulgar Tabak, which was recently be, well, was recently privatized. We were Citibank was the sell side advisor, and we teamed with Citibank on advising also on the sell side. So we advised the government on selling Bulgar Tabak. So this is the as recent 
this is actually the most recent experience of any of the big four uh, and, and, and doing a fairly big ticket because this is over 100 million and now in Bulgaria there are not that many left. <coughs> yes? Uh, what happened with the money in the hedge fund team? Fund team? What happened with the people? Were there like, any I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Uh, it wasn't successful, uh, but again, by, by, by being not successful, do not think uh, you know, money disappeared. By being not successful, I mean um, uh, you couldn't raise enough money. When you can raise enough money, you're, just, you're not successful. Um, I uh, Actually, one of my partners stayed uh, much longer with the hedge fund. Um, you know, we split. Uh, and maybe I sh shouldn't go into that much detail. It's not it's, it's big detail, but he tried for a good two, three years more, but uh, it was just wasn't enough money to, to invest. Yeah, obviously, you had a lot of working experience before joining Deloitte. Uh, what my question is, um, yeah, I know there's a lot of teaching on the job, but does what we actually learn in school help? Uh, on the entry level position, or is it mostly you're completely fake as you don't know anything and for the whole stuff? No, it's, uh, of course it helps. Uh, by the way, uh, actually, I, uh, we, were, we, were, we were talking at, at Thunderbird, and uh, you know, I have friends at you know, Harvard, Cornell, that things that we've, we've done at the American University here uh, the same things that we were doing doing uh, MBAs. So it's and then you, you see some of those things applied at, uh, um, at the workplace. Uh, so don't just um, think that it's all real life, completely different story. It is different, but of course you need to to have your you know numbers straight and uh, you you need to have bas you know basic business skills, of course. And there is also the technical knowledge. Uh, you open a book. There is no two ways to analyze financial statements. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the world is very unfair because you can have zero degree, you can Google it, okay, or you can get a textbook and learn how to analyze financial statements. You can be as good as anyone else. And it, it's a bookish thing. It's a AUBG thing. It's not a real life blah, blah story. It becomes a real life blah, blah story when people like me have to go someplace and do the blah, blah and sell something. But it's. When you start doing the work, you are as good as a carpenter. You know, you, this is how you analyze financial statements. There's no different way. And you learn this here, if you want to learn it here, or the MBA. Yes? Uh, you mentioned ACCA. Do you support your people for that? Yeah, of course. We pay ACCA. Uh, yeah. We pay. We, we give uh, vacation, uh, paid leave. Yes? What about the CFA? Same, same. We do. CFA is more of a my thing, more of a financial advisor thing. What about master degrees? Do you finance support master degrees? No, we 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 wouldn't. And again, it's a natural, again, it's a natural thing for for our organization. Um, it's. I couldn't imagine what yeah, when we would be. Well, in bigger geographies, yes. I'm sure in the UK and the in, in the US, yes. But it's not typical. You know, in, uh, let's let's stick to our geographies. Our well, geographies is not typical. Of course, in the UK, it's different than the US. I think it's strong to ask you, but still, um, in Arsenian, we practice like student support, so we offer internship for two weeks during the Yes. Here? Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Two, they do two weeks. Yeah, Because you, I, I thought you said summer, and that's why during the winter break. Yeah. Uh, because I think it's a hard time for all the companies, so just all the companies. Yeah. Well, the uh, we do both. Uh, we do internship both uh, you know, winter and summer. Uh, I'm not familiar that we've done short. You know, two weeks. We usually do four weeks at minimum. Uh, hmm. Is there any opening for okay. internationals? Like internship for internationals? Like I'm not from Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, okay. Try to be in your team for internship. Like, is there a chance for 
Smaller than four Bulgarians. It's, it's a terrible thing to say, but you would have better chance with me, with us, than with audit. Really better chance. And I think it is the same in, in, in all big four, same in EY. And uh, uh, financial advisory, in terms of internship, it, obviously it's easy, yeah, it's easier, but still, financial advisory, we're, we're a small group of people. Uh, all big four. We're talking 10 people, 10, 12, moving average. And uh, So the same as you know, as usual as uh, any place in the world. You do you know early uh, April for for the summer. Uh, you can do April even if you do even if you do January and February, it, it won't hurt. Uh, and again, one of the things that you know you have my business cards. I can always channel channel any request to the to the HR department if something uh, you know gets on the HR desk in in January or February. It's treated the same way as something that arrives in beginning of May. But up until May, it's always uh, it's good time. You're not late. So You're active here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to play Bulgaria, and the company that uh, uh, doesn't have a long history of being in the great economy. When speaking about consulting and financial advising, it's usually speaking about some like big customers, and so they're like big service complex service providers or like some mm. financial institutions. But like, like in the other countries like States, UK, it's pretty common that like small and middle sized businesses hire consulting companies to like for some small tasks. Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of like small uh, and local consulting companies that just like assist them. So do you think, would it, how do you, would you believe like the possibility of development of such trend in Bulgaria and having small companies like having a lot of small businesses? The small companies I've before before joining Deloitte, I was actually uh, a head of a corporate uh, finance boutique, um, and was one of the partners of a, that corporate finance boutique. And we again dealt with not that consulting, pure consulting work, but with M and A advisory. And we made more than I made in in Deloitte for one year in terms of revenues by by advising. And by small companies, I mean companies that are making. Uh, uh, in terms of revenues, 15, 20 million level, which which is really not sizable. You know, trust me, if someone of you thinks that this is sizable, this is this is small even by Bulgarian standards. It's it's small million, and we made our money from them. We didn't make our money from uh, telecommunications or from energy companies. Or from uh, we made our money in a very uh, direct way. Those were good years, of course, 27, 27, 2007, 2008. Uh, but it was advising someone to acquire or advising someone to dispose of shares. Uh, so for that particular, uh, you know, on that particular playground, I can say if, it, if it's good, good times, and good, again, by good times, that's what I mean. And business was good, uh, revenues were, were going up. Uh, you can make money doing that type of advisory. Hiring someone, you know, from the, you know, getting hired from the mid-market, those particular companies to do the the other type of consulting, which is not which is not tied to business combination, but to you know come and well, help me help me help me do my cash flow or something like that. Let's be realistic. There's, there's no chance. There's, yeah, there's no chance. Those real nitty-gritty type of consulting stuff is done, of, of course, by, by, you know, by the MTELs of the world, by the HPs of the world. Uh, and they would use you know, us or you know, McKinsey's or uh, Unicredit, for example, would hire McKinsey to do a, a branch network optimization. Okay, so McKinsey comes, if you know McKinsey, a big consulting company, they come here in Bulgaria and they start looking at branches and stuff and portfolios and they throw a paper you know, worth Million and a half, uh, but again, Unicredit is a big organization. Uh, but mid-market companies, they, they run like mostly one-man shows. And this is what to, to refer back to what I was saying. This it's guerrilla war here in Bulgaria. It's not, it's not a typical. You have very few few big names that try to to have corporate governance and you know this, this corporate. 
type of management, real corporate type of management that will take that advice and consulting. Like, it can feel like it's like a vicious circle, it's for small businesses? No, it's, it's incremental. It's not, yeah, it, it, it sounds like a vicious circle. But you know what, I understand what you're saying. It's like vicious circle when we say, sometimes we say, you know, oh, hell, global warming. Well, it's not global warming because we only live 20 years or 30 years, okay? And, and I'm looking at the business exactly like you know, what, what you're saying. It's vicious circle because you know, they, 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 they just don't learn, those guys. Yeah? But in, in 50 years, it will be different. Most of them will be dead. Apologies. But there will be other guys. And, and the market will be different. It's incremental. We just don't have the, you know, the law has been in Bulgaria for 20 years. People don't know how to sell. They don't, they don't know anything, you know, including ourselves here. We don't have the, you know, 20 generations of shoemakers. What, what do you expect? Yeah. But, but it's, it's almost like vicious circle. Like I see some small, some small players opened up, and they, like, they can't make any money. And like somebody proposed, like, why don't you, why don't you hire some business graduate? He, he can tell you how to do things. And they say, well, we can barely break even. We don't have money to hire additional person. Case by case. And then, like, he would, he would Someone was saying, you know, psychology, if that works, yeah. I understand. It's, it's, that is the vicious circle. But I guess you know, in, in 20 or 30 years, someone in your position would, would see it differently. And, and the world would be different. But it's, yeah, of course it is like this. I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure that any of you here can add value to a number of businesses that supposedly are doing great. Because they're not doing that great. You know, when you walk in to their offices, uh, you have your coffee or your whiskey or what have you, and then you see how great they're doing. They're not doing great at all. Uh, but but it's, it's incremental, one step at a time. Right? Marto. I'm kidding. OK, guys, if you don't have any questions, I think we're over here. And we have a small buffet over there with wine and some beverages as well. If you want to join there, I'll be there. So thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you.